In the years after World War II, there was a general fear that the United States would enter another depression. However, by the 1950s, the economy surged upward in a boom that would last for two decades. Cheap energy, increased worker productivity, and the GI Bill of Rights were all reasons for this economic success. Americans started to migrate toward the Sun Belt of the South and West, taking the power out of the Old Northeast. Suburbia grew as well, with mostly whites fleeing the more racially diverse cities. The Yalta Agreement before the end of the war discussed peacetime plans. However, different visions for a post-war world led to a standoff between the United States and the Soviet Union. The Truman Doctrine in 1947 unleashed a policy of containment, where America would support all free people resisting Soviet control. The Marshall Plan gave economic assistance to European countries for war reparations and to revive their economies. The threat of the looming Soviet Union and the fall of China to communism in 1949 spurred the Red Hunt by Senator McCarthy and others. In the presidential election of 1948, Truman battled to win a second term, and much to the surprise of the nation, won the election, even though his Democratic Party had split three ways. The Korean conflict started with the attack on South Korea by North Korea in 1950, and Truman almost immediately issued the NSC-68 document and went to the UN for troops to fight North Korea. General MacArthur made impressive gains at first, but started to publicly criticize Truman after a disagreement over whether or not to bomb Manchuria. Truman saw no other choice but to fire the general, but it was not a very popular decision at home. The era of Eisenhower was a relatively relaxed period compared to what would soon afterwards face the nation. Consumerism came to define American way of life as advertising increased and the American people discovered they had plenty of money to spend. Eisenhower supported a small government philosophy and stopped enormous military buildup. He supported the Interstate Highway Act of 1956, which built 42,000 miles of highways all over the country. Although he was reluctant to get involved in the civil rights movement, he intervened in Little Rock by sending in federal troops to escort nine African-American students to a previously all-white school. The Eisenhower Doctrine in 1957 pledged U.S. military and economic aid to Middle Eastern, to Middle Eastern countries threatened by communist aggression. Fidel Castro seized control of Cuba in 1959 and became a sat satellite to Moscow, starting hostile relations with the Little Island. President John F. Kennedy swung into the White House with a new energy. He, pr he pushed for a strategy of flexible response and showered upon the people his dream of the new frontier. The Bay of Pigs invasion in 1961 and the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962 threatened American security and showed the continuations of hostile relations with the Communist Soviet Union. Although a supporter of the black civil rights movement, he was not able to push through much legislation for their cause because of the opposition of Southern senators. After his assassination on November in November 1963, his VP, Lyndon Baines Johnson, was able to pass the landmark Civil Rights Act of 1964. LBJ's Great Society was a set of economic and welfare programs aimed at transforming the American way of life. Part of this was his famous War on Poverty. Although Johnson was able to greatly drop the poverty, poverty level, he tried to juggle too much at once with his involvement in the Vietnam conflict, which is very unpopular with the American people, and so he decided not to run in the presidential election of 1968. President Richard Nixon introduced his policy of Vietnamization, which withdrew troops from Vietnam and supplied the South Vietnamese with money, weapons, training, and advice so that they could continue to fight their own war. He also ushered in a period of detente with the Soviet Union by negotiations with China. However, his successes in office were overshadowed by the Water Watergate scandal and the televised hearings from 1973 to 1974. When it seemed that he would be impeached, Nixon resigned, leaving his VP Gerald Ford in the White House. Because Ford pardoned Nixon, his presidency was immediately unpopular, and Democratic Jimmy Carter won the election of 1976. At first, he was very popular, but he was considered an outsider by Congress. The, the Iran hostage crisis in 1979 humili humiliated his presidency as Carter waited for a stable government to negotiate with. The situation dragged on for the rest of his term, and the hostages were not freed until the day of Reagan's inauguration. 
President Ronald Reagan was elected by a growing number of conservatives in the country. He pushed for his program of supply-side economics, of lower taxes, and new right social policies. The Cold War became colder once more with Reagan's hard-as-nails outlook toward communism. However, new Soviet leader Gorbachev introduced policies of glasnost and perestroika, which were aimed at reviving the economy by adapting free market practices of the West, effectively dooming the Soviet Union. Reagan added almost $2 trillion to the debt in his eight years in office. Republican George H.W. Bush won in the 1988 presidential election. His administration saw the unraveling of communism as communist Eastern European countries toppled their governments one by one, <coughs> including the fall of their Berlin Wall in 1989. In 1991, the USSR disintegrated into component parts, and Gorbachev stepped down. When Iraq leader Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait in 1990, the UN launched a massive international military deployment spearheaded by the U.S. It lasted 41 days, only four of which were on land, since the rest were all bombing raids. Saddam Hussein accepted a ceasefire, and Kuwait was liberated. Democratic Bill Clinton won the presidential election of 1992, promising to stimulate the economy, reform the welfare system, and overhaul health care. The congressional election of 1994 was overwhelmingly Republican, thanks to Newt Gin Gingrich and his contract with America, leading to arguments between the Congress and the President. The economy continued to grow into the 2000s, driven by new internet business businesses and high-tech and media companies. In January of 1988, it was revealed that Clinton had had an affair with Monica Lewinsky and then lied about it under oath. He was impeached by the House, but not by the Senate. Republican George W. Bush won the controversial presidential election in 2000 against Al Gore. The 9-11 attacks killed approximately 3,000 people. Bush responded by making Osama bin Laden the enemy, along with Al-Qaeda, and ordered a massive military campaign against Afgan Afghanistan. Bush also launched a controversial invasion of Iraq in March two 2003 to oust Saddam Hussein from power, which was achieved in less than a month. However, the people of Iraq did not embrace democracy as had been expected, and the U U.S. were forced to keep troops in Iraq for reconstruction. 